Hello, this is Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter investigator. Thank you so much for your time. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the question or answer the question, where did Black Lives Matter invest $21.7 million in 2020? Again, where did Black Lives Matter invest $21.7 million in 2020. As we know, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation administrators, particularly uh, Patrice Kahn Coolers, admitted to receiving $90 million in 2020 between June the 1st and August the 31st in the wake of the George Floyd murder. Now that their organization is being investigated, they have announced that they used 30 million of the $90 million in 2020 for the good of the community. Specifically, they used $21.7 million in the form of grants to community-based organizations. And they also used $8.4 million in operating expenses in 2020. This evening, I'm going to focus, focus on determining where the $21.7 million went in 2020. And then I will come back in another update to focus on where the $8.4 million went in 2020. I'm using information from the blacklivesmatter.com website as my source for this information. In 2020, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation published what they called a 2020 impact report. Because once again, they started feeling the heat from people asking the question, where is the money? Where is all of this money going? Because during that time, if you remember, you had major corporations throwing money at the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation you had major celebrities, I'm talking about major celebrities, throwing money at the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and showing their receipts from their donation on TikTok and other online platforms. So the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation felt the pressure to answer the question, what's going on? How are you using this money? So they attempted to calm everyone down by publishing a 2020 impact report. So I'm going to pause my screen and I'm going to go to that report so that you can see it for yourself. And again, I'm focusing in on just one area of the report and that is regarding the $21.7 million. And then I will come back later on to do other updates regarding the $8.4 million in operating expenses that they claim to have incurred. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to the blacklivesmatter.com website and I'm gonna walk you through the steps so that you can go back if you choose to, to look at the full report later. So the report, you would think something this major would be glaring on the home page because this should be something or should be something that they want to brag about but as i scroll down the home page you can see that um or i don't see where it's mentioned so i found it in their resources link here before i click on that link i do want to point out that their blue donate button is still not here because as you may recall, the Attorney General of California, the Attorney General of Indiana, and the Secretary of State of Washington are investigating this organization right now. 
and they were forced to remove to remove the blue donate button that used to be here right beside the resources link. So I'm gonna click on the resources link and I'm going to scroll down to the 2020 impact report. The 2020 impact report is now generating, as you can see. And it's open. So I have to give kudos to the website developers because the website is well organized in terms of the layout. So I have to give kudos to the website developers because they do a great job in laying out this website in my opinion. So this is a 2020 impact report and I'm going to click on it. Okay, and I'm gonna scroll up to the very top of it. And this is the report. Once again, I'm not going to look at the whole report. Um, if I scroll down, you will see it says Black Lives Matter 2020 impact report, but I'm gonna go to page 20 because I know that's the page that I want to start on because that's the page that introduces us to the finances. It's called the financial, financial snapshot. The financial snapshot. I can't hardly say it's a tongue twister. But this report, by the way, was written by Patrice Kahn Coolers, who was, in every sense of the word, um, the only person managing this organization in August of 2020. She had left the organization temporarily along with her cohorts, Alicia Garza and Oprah Tomete. They all defected from the organization. And then people encouraged Patrice Kahn Coolers to come back and manage during this time of, in my opinion, financial gain. Um, during this time in which everything was heightened and the money was flowing, they needed to have someone at the helm. So she came back uh, so-called reluctantly. So this impact report was written by Patrice Kahn Coolers. Okay, and she does have an introductory page that you can go back and read if you choose. I'm not gonna read all of this information underneath the financial snapshot that she wrote. You can read it if you choose. I just wanna look on the right side over here that says by the numbers. And you can see where, again, they admit that um, $90 million was raised in 2020. The average donation was $30.64 and more than 10% of donating donations were reoccurring or recurring. The breakdown, 8.4 million in operating expenses, 21.7 million in grants dispersed to more than 33 organizations, 23 of which are led by LGBTQIA people and BLM chapters. Now I want you to make a mental note of what that just said or what we are reading here. It says 21.7 million. That's the question that I asked in the top of this video, what happened to $21.7 million? Well, here it says 21.7 million in grants, in grants, meaning tax-free money that you never have to pay back, dispersed to more than 33 organizations 23 of which are led by LGBTQIA people and BLM chapters. BLM chapters, okay? Think about that. Remember that. Remember this information because I'm going to come back to it. 23% of total assets dispersed compared to the industry or industry, industry average of 5 to 8%. So they're bragging about the fact that they gave out or they dispersed 23% of their total assets compared to the industry standard of five to 8% of total assets. Well, who, who knows? Who knows if that's true or not, right? So that's what I wanted to bring out in this, in this page. So again, the financial snapshot by the numbers, 90 million raised in 2020, go down to 8.4 million in operating expenses. I would talk about that in another update and then 21.7 million 
dispersed in the way that they've outlined here. So I'm gonna scroll down. You might be wondering, okay, which organizations received this money? You said 33 organizations received the money. So I'm gonna go down and they do list the organizations, right? They list the organizations. So here are the organizations here. In 2020, we selected 30 local organizations. But before, if you go back up, they said 33. Now they're saying 30 local organizations, which are not part of their grassroots apparatus, whatever that means, to be our first cohort of official Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation grantees recipients of the free money or the grantees. As several communities were thrown into heightened political, socioeconomic, and medical vulnerabilities through COVID-19, COVID-19, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation sought to ensure the survival of some of society's most vulnerable Black, LGBTQIA folks. Of the 30 organizations selected, 23 of them are led by Black LGBTQIA folks and are directly serve these communities in places like Chicago, New York, New Jersey, December, and Alabama. Our selected organizations are listed below. We have committed a six-figure grant to each of these organizations. So be, in the part I asked you to remember, they said 33 organizations and then some Black Lives Matter chapters. Now they don't mention 33, they say 30 organizations and they don't mention the chapters. You know why they don't mention the chapters? because Patrice Kahn Coolers dissolved the chapters in 2020 when the chapters started asking, where is the money? The organization started out with a ever-changing number of official chapters that they recognized. But when the chapters started complaining about the lack of transparency on the highest level, then Patrice Kahn Coolers just dissolved the chapter. She decided we're not gonna have a chapter format. So for them to say they gave money to BLM chapters, that's not true because the chapters didn't exist during this time frame. Okay, so now we're looking at these organizations that she chose because she was technically the only employee or the only person in leadership during this time frame, there was no board of directors to vote on which organizations would receive grant funding. There is no published grant funding application process because whenever you are serving as a grant funder, you're supposed to have a transparent process so that any organization that meets your qualifications in terms of who you serve will have the option to apply. Now that's normally how it works. It doesn't have to work that way, but that's normally how it works. In this case, it seems that Patrice Kahn Coolers just decided for herself to grant six-figure grants to these 30 organizations. Now, if you are going to receive grant money from a nonprofit organization, you should have 501c3 status yourself. The Okra Project should have 501c3 status. The TGI Justice Project should have 501c3 status. All of these organizations here to receive tax-free grant money should have 501c3 nonprofit status. The Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation should not award free six-figure grants 
to organizations that don't have a nonprofit status. So how do you know if these organizations have a nonprofit status? That's very simple. The first place you should be able to look is on their website. Every nonprofit organization's website should have two things on the home page and every page thereafter the EIN number and a link to their Form 990 information returns. The EIN number will enable you to investigate this organization because it serves like a social security number for your nonprofit. It's called the employer identification number. And then the Form 990 information returns act like the tax returns for an individual because it shows your revenues and your expenses. So those two things should be on the homepage and every other page in a nonprofit organization or on a nonprofit organization's website. In addition to, of course, the donate button, but the donate button should not be on there if you don't have 501c3 tax deductible status. So I'm going to open up the Okra project. So let me pause my screen while that's opening up for you so make sure that you see it, okay? So this is the Okra project. Now looking at this or glancing at this quickly, um, I don't see where, I don't see the words form 990, I don't see the word EIN or the abbreviation EIN, but that's okay. Let's click on it. Let's click, let's, let's click on some links here. So it shows the team, okay? team members, okay, um, sponsors, donors, collaborations, feeding the future, okay, I'm looking for EIN and I'm looking for Form 990, programs, dinner on us, okay, I still not, not seeing it, okay, um, Let's see, blog. And this may be a very good organization. I don't know. All I want to know as a, a person who may want to invest is, is it legitimate in terms of having nonprofit status, right? Okay, um, press. Because if you have 501c3 status and if you have a great record, you should want to brag about those things. You should want to brag about having um, those statuses. You should want to be able to show that you are legitimate and above board. And then it says, get involved. Okay, so get involved. You can either get involved by contacting them or you can get involved by making a tax deductible donation. So let's, hmm tax deductible donation. Okay. So that implies that the Okra project has 501c3 status or some type of status that allows me to write off my donation, right? So let me click on it. Surely the EIN will be on this page. No, it's not. Okay. The Okra project, choose your donation frequently, frequency and your donation level, and then go on with that. Hmm. This is the perfect page to have your EIN showing and a link to your Form 990 information returns because if somebody wants to invest, they could click and say, oh, wow, they're so transparent. I love this, but that's not the case. So since they are given the option to make a tax deductible donation, surely they must have some type of nonprofit status. How can you find out? Glad you asked. You can find out by going to the IRS. I'm gonna to go to the IRS website so that you can see how to check out an organization to make sure that they do have 501c3 status. So I'm at the irs.gov website. And in order to check the status of a nonprofit organization, you click on charities and nonprofits right here. Let me maximize, let me increase my screen size just a little tad. Okay. Okay. You go to charities and nonprofits, and then you scroll down to tax exempt organization search and click on search organizations. 
And then you scroll down and you click on it again. And then you scroll down and click on search for tax exempt organization. So now you're at the page on the irs.gov website that allows you to search for any organization by organization name or by EIN. I was just doing some investigation. So the default setting is search all databases, search by employer identification number, and then you type in the number. But if you don't have the number, then you switch over to search by organization name and you type in the organization name. And the name is the Okra Project. So I'm gonna type that in. So I typed in the Okra Project because that's the name of the organization that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation has awarded tax-free grant money. So I'm gonna click on search and I'm gonna scroll down. And what do you see? It says, your search did not return any results. Please try again. So what this tells me is this organization does not have its own 501c3 nonprofit status. Now, why I say its own is because some nonprofit organizations operate under fiscal sponsorship of organ other organizations that do have 501c3 status. I don't know if that's the case here or not because there's no information, right? They're not transparent, right? I don't know what's going on with this organization. So, of course, I'm not gonna go through all 30 of them, but I just wanted to show you the process um, that you can use to check the status of organization to see if they are legitimate. Because once again, you have all of these organizations, 30 of them, that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation has invested six-figure grants. So, I mean, do they have the status or not? I'm gonna pause my screen because I'm gonna wrap this up and go back to my presentation and share with you some questions that I would like to ask the IRS um, about this whole situation here. So just one moment, please, as I return back to my, my presentation to ask some questions, or the questions that I would like to ask the IRS. So IRS questions about this whole situation. One, what is the grant funding application process? How did these organizations apply for the grant funding that they received? Two, who selected the organizations to receive the $21.7 million in grant funding? Well, who was on duty at the time? Patrice Kahn Coolers. Three, how can organizations receive free grant money without a 501c3 status? Right? I looked at several of them, and none of them had 501c3 status according to the irs.gov website, which would know, right, who has 501c3 status or which organizations have it. So how can they get the free money without 501c3 status? Four, how can organizations accept tax deductible donations without 501c3 status? For example, what if I wanted to donate to the Okra project? How can they have a page up to accept my money without having a 501c3 status when they told me I can write it off? When they said, make a tax deductible donation, click here, that, let, that implies it's gonna be tax deductible, right? So how can they say that without having a status? Five, how are the organizations using the tax-free grant money to serve the community? What type of transparency are they showing? What kind of accountability are they showing? What type of reporting are they providing to let people know that yes, we are using the six-figure free grant money to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What are they doing with the money? Six, where are the financial reports that show accountability and transparency? When I operated programs through my nonprofit organization, we were always held accountable for transparent reporting. Some organizations that gave us money wanted us to provide financial reports every single month. 
So how can they get away with not being accountable? How can they get away with not showing transparency? Especially now, since Patrice Conkoulis has gone on with her life and no longer affiliated with the organization, and no one is at the organization, technically in a leadership position. So these organizations just, re just received free, tax-free money with no expectation to show accountability or transparency. What happens when people file their tax deductible donations on their personal tax returns? You know, when you give money to a nonprofit organization, you are gonna file it on your personal tax returns, right? I know I do. So when the, when the IRS checks the validity of the organizations in which you made tax deductible donations or what you thought you were making tax deductible donation, what happens? I'll tell you what happened from personal experience. I made a tax deductible, don tax deductible donation to an organization and the IRS flagged it, sent me a letter, letting me know that the organization did not have 501c3 status and that the money that I donated could not be used as a tax write-off. That's what happened. You get a letter stating that whatever donation you made cannot be written off. So then you're stuck, okay? You gave money that cannot be written off. So what do you do? You reach out to the organization and say, hey, I gave you a donation. You don't have 501c3 status. So now I'm flagged with the IRS. Does the IRS think I was trying to be de deceptive? I don't know. But who wants to get a letter from the IRS saying that you've done something wrong? These are questions that I would like the IRS to answer regarding this 21.7 21 million dollar disbursement of grant funding to organizations that Patrice Con Coolers evidently handpicked. So once again, here we are, right? Here we are once again with asking the question, where is the money? And this time I'm asking the question, where did the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation invest $21.7 million in 2020? Because they're trying to pretend that they want to be transparent by saying, oh, we gave money to 30 organizations or 33 organizations of whichever number they choose to use. So that's where that money went. And then we have another $8.4 million in operating expenses to show we are doing the work. In my next update, I'm going to explore the $8.4 million in operating expenses. What type of operating expenses? Do you have receipts to show how you used $8.4 million in 2020 when everything was basically shut down? Again, I'm Susan Woods, your Black Lives Matter investigator. Thank you so much again for your time and for your support. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.